Hello everyone and welcome to our weekly Coyotes chat. Uh, the Coyotes have been off since Saturday when they last played against the Tampa Bay Lightning, um, but they're back on um, on the ice for a game tomorrow against the Colorado Avalanche at home. They'll have another home game Saturday against the Anaheim Ducks before they head on the road for a two-game road trip. So they spent these last few days practicing. Um, obviously, we've been monitoring their injury situation. Today, Derek Morris and David Schlemko practice, and it looks like they're feeling better. Um, Zabina Pahalik skated only briefly before leaving the ice, and Lori Kubrakowski did not skate. Final roster decisions, it sounds like for tomorrow's games won't be made until the morning when they can kind of further evaluate their health and um, where they're at. Obviously, they recalled Tim Kennedy from Portland, uh, it sounds like, to, to slot in if Korpakovsky can't go. He was actually playing in Korpakovsky's spot on the Martin Hansel reading for bottle line. So um, Korpakovsky is an upper body injury. Um, today, Dave Tippett said it's along the same lines of the previous upper body injury he had. So he's hopeful that Mahalik and Korpakovsky's injuries aren't long term, but will continue to monitor them. And if Dave, um, if Derek Morris is able to return, he'd have to come off injured reserve, and someone would have to go on. Um, my guess is probably be Korpakovsky, but we'll see. Um, they could also choose to send Kennedy down, but that seems a little bit unlikely considering they just recalled him. Um, so let's get started with our first question. This comes from John. Has GM Don Maloney giving, given any more thought to trading away one of our awesome demon for a goal scoring machine, or is he just going to wait until the trade the trade deadline as team um, as the team's playing well? Um, you know, I think right now everything's kind of kosher. They're keeping everything though, you know, um, stable since the team is winning. Um, you know, they're off to one of the best starts through the first quarter of the season in 15 years. So um, it's hard to argue with the with the success and the points that they're getting but um, obviously as we mentioned every week in these chats they are looking to add a scoring left winger that has been atop their wish list since the offseason whether or not that um, you know they're able to add that player now or later I, I would guess later as we get closer to the trade deadline I think there's just so many teams right now that feel that they're still in contention that we're not seeing you know a lot of yard sale signs being planted in front of these teams that are saying we're open for business let's let's make a move um, so I think as we get closer um, to the trade deadline after the Olympic break we'll see teams start to pull away and, and some um, obviously in contention in contention and not, um, and it might be more, you know, realistic for them to make a trade then. But we'll see. Uh, you know, that's an area they'd like to improve. But then again, their goal scoring is, you know, they're the second highest scoring team in the league right now. So, you know, I wonder if that's the chemistry that they really want to mess with right now. Our next question comes from Paul Hoffman. Is Klesla on the trade block, wondering why he was a healthy scratch last week? Um, this is a great question, Paul, and it was something that was very um, peculiar, at least to me, to see um, Klesla a healthy scratch last game. He took the warm-up. Uh, he skated that morning. Everything seemed um, legit, like he'd be back in the lineup and he would be able to play. And so, um, obviously, then he was healthy. He could play, um, but they just wanted to go with a younger uh, more, I guess, mobile defense, um, and that's why David Rumblad we saw slot in, and actually Dave Tippett was happy with Rumblad's performance, and um, it brings me back to this conversation that I had recently with Dave Tippett, where um, he kind of made the argument um, or brought up this discussion of defending less versus defending better. Obviously, there are players that you know are your steady, stay-at-home veteran, good defending players, and Klesla like Derek Morris, like Zabinik Mahalik would fall into that category. But then again, you have these other other type of defenders who are great puck movers. Maybe they're not as good defenders, but they can move the puck and get it out of your zone very quickly. And Saturday's game became a case of the Coyotes wanted to defend less. They wanted to um, you know, move the puck out of their zone, get it out of, you know, get it out of pressure. And really trying to have an active mobile defense. And that's what they had with Roomblad, that's what they have with Michael Stone. 
Oliver Ekman, Larson, Keith, Yandel. So it sounds like this is kind of going to be a matchup basis. When are they going to need their big, heavy guys like Klesla? And when are they going to maybe want to go with a little bit more skill like Roomblad? Um, so we'll see also injuries play into it. So we may see Klesla back in the lineup tomorrow. He obviously missed Monday's practice, uh, or rather Tuesday's practice, to deal with a personal issue. But he was back there skating today. You know, healthy, good to go. I, you know, I think everyone's kind of dealing with bumps and bruises, but nothing that will sideline him right now. So it'll be interesting to see. But this is the depth on the defense that we've been talking about that the Coyotes are expected to use, and they're using it right now. Um, this question, next question, comes from Bob. Hey, Sarah. It seems to me that the Coyotes and the Avs have to be the two biggest surprises in the NHL this season. Would you agree? Secondly, how do you initially feel about the Patrick Waugh hiring? Well, I think uh, the Avs start was one of the most, you know, surprising uh, tales of the season so far. I don't think anyone expected them to to start the way that they did, especially with a new coach, um, you know, and having Patrick Waugh come in. But you know, I really felt that um, there was so much motivation and excitement with bringing a former great Avalanche player into the fold and having him take over the team. That I think that really galvanized and, and motivated the players. And I think especially that early season an altercation with the Anaheim Ducks, um, you know, although that maybe isn't appropriate and, and it was obviously out of bounds for him to try and push the partition in between the benches um, when he got into an altercation, a verbal altercation with, with Anaheim coach Bruce Boudreau. I think that really showed the players that he has their back and he's here for them and um, you know he's going to in essence go to war for them and stick up for them and, and I think that can really translate to a group so you know I think their start in the fact that they're right you know at the top half of the standings keeping pace with the likes of Phoenix, Chicago, Anaheim, San Jose is really remarkable because this was a franchise the last few years that has been near the bottom. Um, would the Coyotes be considered a success? A surprise, rather, um, maybe so, but I, I think you know the core of this team has stayed together, and, and it's been successful the last few years. Obviously, they didn't make the playoffs, but um, you know there hasn't been too much overhaul these last few seasons. Obviously, adding micro barrel helps, and you know getting ownership settled adds some stability. But um, you know it does have a different feel. I, I don't think they played their best, and they'll be the first to say that. And then you look at the standings, and they're near the top. So I think that's the most surprising part for me is that they're doing. Doing so well considering they're not playing a typical Coyotes brand of hockey. Their defense hasn't been as stingy as it's been in the past. And they've had so many injuries in different lineups. So that's what's surprising for me. Um, but we'll see how long it lasts. Obviously, it's an 82 game season, not a 21 game season, and there's still time for the Coyotes to either keep it going or, or maybe take a step back. This question is from Mike. What was the reasoning behind Klesla being a healthy scratch on the last game, injury in the doghouse, shopping him, or Murphy? And obviously we just answered this question, but um, Mike brings up a good point. Is he in the doghouse? Were they shopping him? Obviously they wanted to play Murphy, Connor Murphy. They called him up from the AHL, wanted to get him in that game because he was a right-handed shooter. Klaus is a lefty, so that's where that discrepancy comes up. But, you know, I, I kind of wondered the same. Klaus is on the last year of a contract, and he does play that style that, you know, teams that are heading towards the playoff, they like to add those those types of players. He's a, you know, a strong, reliable, responsible, heavy defender, a stay-at-home guy. And those are the ones that, you know, you want come playoff time. So, I don't think that they're they're shopping him or trying to protect him from getting injured. I, I really do think they need all hands on deck on this defense to keep this this run going. Um, was he in the doghouse? I don't know. He he was a minus three against the Blackhawks in that previous game, so um, it was a, a little bit of a struggle that game for him. And but like I said, maybe it was just Tippett wanting to get a different look. That's what it sounded like. That was his reasoning. Um, but we'll see going forward. You know when and how Klesla is worked back in, but. You know, with a guy on the last year of a contract, um, someone who probably be a, you know a commodity that other teams would be interested in. I think his status will be one to monitor as we get deeper into the season. This next question is from Dave. It is hard to criticize due to the Yotes record. However, do you feel this team is lacking that punch or some aggression? I'm not looking for goon-like tactics, just some fire. Aggressive teams like the Sharks, Kings, and Ducks are going to pass them because they know how to play Phoenix. 
might sound hypocritical due to the record and where they sit in the standings, but Smith can't stand on his head all season again, or hopefully he does. Uh, I, I think that's safe to say that you know the workload of Smith has been rigorous so far. 637 shots, most in the league. Um, they can't keep that up, and they know they can't. And they actually did a good job of cutting down on their shots against last game. But what has to be taken into mind with Smith's workload is where these shots are coming from and the quality of shots. If they're outside the blue line, long shots from the outside, you know, they're not threatening. He, you know, he merely directs them to the corner or stops them and the Coyotes go the other way, perhaps. But a lot of times he's getting these shots because teams don't want him to leave the crease and puck handle it and all of a sudden the Coyotes are going the other way. So part of that just comes with the territory. As far as their physical aggression um, and their style, um, you know, I think they're just playing smart. I think they're trying to play to their strength. You know, they're not as big and bruising as the Kings and the Ducks maybe are. Um, but, you know, there's a way to combat that. And, you know, I think hitting is not necessarily always a good stat because it kind of means you're chasing the puck sometimes. You don't have it. And you're trying to get it back. So, yeah, you know, I think that they'll find that happy medium. You know, as as they get into maybe more of those battles with those teams, but safe to say though, you do have to be big and heavy and physical to to keep pace with those teams. Um, that's a fair point that Dave made. So it'll be something to watch. Um, you know, they don't have a lot of those types of players, but um, you know, maybe that's something that they try to bulk up. Um, you know, later in the season, they they have so far in the past. You look at adding a guy like Dave Moss recently in the past few years. That's the type of size, clean camera. That's the type of size and strength they're looking for. Guys who can still move around and skate and and score every once in a while. Um, this question comes from guest. Any chance the Coyotes bring back Ray Whitney? Um, I don't see that this season. Uh, obviously, he's locked into a contract with Dallas. It's his last year on that contract, but you know, then you kind of wonder if, if he's retiring. Uh, he obviously worked great here with the Coyotes, but you know, it might be a case where everyone's parted ways, and, and that's all we see from him. But um, you know, I know he loved living here. Um, it was a great fit for him, but I don't think that's a move that's on the Coyotes' radar right now. Coyotes fan 314, is there any reason to believe a trade is coming? I don't think so right now. You know, there's too many issues with health and injuries, and they're needing everybody right now. And as we've seen, their depth has been huge this season. I can't see them trading that, that away right now. But as we get closer into the into the new year, um, and into the new year, closer to the trade deadline, maybe it's possible. Uh, another question from Guest, the Coyotes offense has been uh, on fire, yet the goaltending has been less than spectacular. Do the Coyotes have plans to bench trade Mike Smith? No plans to bench or trade Mike Smith. Uh, you know, he's been their MVP perhaps so far this season, and, uh, you know, they're going to need him to be that player going forward. He's just in the first year of a six-year contract. He's part of the core of this team moving forward, and, you know, they're relying on him to, to be the number one guy, and that's why we're seeing him in there most nights. Our last question um, comes from Historicus. Hi Sarah, the Coyotes penalty kill, like last season, has been quite inconsistent. What do you think the primary issues are on the PK? Will the PK eventually get gel under Tippett's coaching or should the Oats consider bringing in another shutdown defender or PK forward? Well, they already brought in a PK forward um, this season with uh, um, you know, obviously Jeff Halpern signing early in the season. He was a center that was able to, um, you know, come in, solidify, um, you know, the PK face-offs. Um, so I think really that's going to be just an area that works by committee. Obviously it hurts when Lori Korpikoski is out of the lineup. It hurts when Martin Hansel has been banged up at times. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, as this team gels and sticks with a consistent lineup, we'll see more consistency there because it's tough when so many parts are coming in and out of the lineup, but I know that's an area of their game they'd like to tighten up, and part of that is, is discipline and not getting in the box, um, you know, in the first place, so um, their PK um, maybe needs improvement, but their power play has been good, so I think overall they're, they're feeling happy about their special teams, but as they say, um, you know, they're always looking for improvement. Uh, so that'll wrap up our chat for today. 
Um, make sure to follow me on Twitter at AZC underscore McClellan for more um, you know, Coyotes updates and news and follow our brand account AZC Sports for more Coyotes links and stories and we'll be back next week for another chat so thank you for joining us.